Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Odin's Movie Vlog. I am the critic who is a cynic. Hope you're doing well. And today, I am going to be talking about defending my honor because apparently someone on the Let's Go After Jeremy stream last night, which is pretty entertaining. I was not able to watch all of it, but I've seen clips of it. And Jeremy going after certain people for certain things they've said. Anna, at one point, has a really great smackdown of a couple of people also. But at one point, there was someone that didn't just go after Jeremy, but actually named me. He went out of his way to name me and said that I was responsible for spreading misinformation and the example that he gave was when I talked about the Alita Battle Angel box office numbers and he was trying to say that I did not understand the box office and that I got it wrong. Now let me first foremost and say this much, like that made any sense, <laughs> that I am not a box office expert, right? I cannot predict magically how the box office is going to work. It is mostly a guessing game, and most people that cover the box office know that much. There are certain things that we can follow. There are trends we can follow, pre-sales we can follow. When movies first come out, we know that movies tend to make between around 40 and 60% of their entire box office run within their first two weeks. Again, go ahead and look to most big budget films, and you'll see that most films, by the end of its run, would have made around 40 to 50, 40 to 60% of its entire box office run within those first two weeks. All right, so pretty much standard at this point. Again, do, go ahead and do your research for yourself. Go ahead and do the numbers for yourself, and let me know if any other big budget films go past that. Again, you'll find it very rare and very uncommon that a film makes more or less than that amount in their first two weeks, which makes a lot of sense seeing that most people, many people, go to see a film within the first two weeks. Not to mention that when it comes to the first two weeks, that's when a studio makes the most money because oftentimes, especially with bigger studios, they tend to make around 90% of the box office take for that weekend. What do I mean by that? Well, what I mean is let's say it costs $10 for a movie. It means that the studio gets $9 of that back while the movie theater, so AMC, Regal, etc., would get $1 back, right? And that's true of most studios, especially in the United States. When you go overseas, that's when the number changes a little bit. For example, in China, studios really don't get all that much. But then again, we never really are told exactly how much a studio gets because it seems to me that China makes deals and, uh, you know, makes various deals with different production companies. So some could get more, some could get less. I don't know. I mean, I honestly, when I think about it, I think that Disney probably comes away with a lot more than 25%. But let's just assume for the sake of argument that it is around 25%. When you take into account the 25%, that movies make from China. When you take into account that they make around 90% of the first two weeks box office and that around 60% or so of the money they make in total comes from that 90% take, it comes around where you have a film taking about, or rather making, around 60% of what it costs to actually make a film. Or rather, scratch that, reverse it, let's go back in time a little bit so that way we're a little at least accurate, right? Because this is someone accusing me of not being accurate here. Let's actually go to Lita Battle Angel. So, they said that when I said that the movie needed to make $430 million to break even, that that number was incorrect. Well, where do I get that number from? Well, look at Scotty Boy Mendelson here. Let's look at his beautiful face for a second. He says this, why $400 million worldwide isn't big enough. And he basically breaks down different numbers and he uses certain multipliers, right? So his multiplier, and you see this happen with a few different people, is set at 2.4. So according to his math, and again, this is not true of all movies, which is why I don't fully agree with what his assessment is, is that films need to make 2.4 times the amount of the budget of the film. Not budget and marketing, but just pure budget alone. The budget for Alita Battle Angel was $200 million. And so therefore, using 2.4 times $200 million, it ends up being around $480 million. But let us not forget that assuming, assuming that it costs around a hundred million extra for marketing, right? Because it's 200 million plus a hundred million, because usually about 50% of a production budget add that in addition to their total production budget of 200 million, you get the total amount they actually spent on the film when you take in marketing into account. And that brings around $300 million. However, some studios spend less on marketing. Some studios don't spend that much money. Some studios actually spend more. Like for example, BVS had a lot of marketing to it and that's why it ended up costing so much that it was almost 800 million break even number for that film, which is why when people say it was a huge success, when you, when you actually look at the numbers themselves, you understand that even BVS itself, though of course, it's made its money back over time, especially on you know digital release and on physical media release, you start to understand that a little bit more. But Alita Battle Angel, right? 
2.4. Now, where does he get that number from? He gets it from the fact that movie studios get 90% from American real you know, from American audiences, or rather from American box office within the first two weeks. And that over time, they get the rest of it. Again, knowing, of course, that's also 60%. And then he also takes into account the 25% that they likely got from China. But of course, we cannot confirm that number. And then he insinuates and assumes that he's getting a 50% or that the studios get around a 50-50 split with other countries overseas. And that's where the problem lies in because we honestly don't know where those different countries lie and how much money they get because you could easily find a country getting less than 50% between them and the studio. Not to mention, his number, his multiplier, does not take into account tax breaks, does not take into account credits, which we know Alita Battle Angel got. In fact, it was very well reported that the $200 million production budget was likely less than that because of the fact it got some tax breaks from the states that it was uh, filming in and from the different places that it was filming in. So what does that mean? Well, Scott Mendelson says that the film would have made needed to make around $480 million based on his two 0.4 times multiplier, it would need to have made $480 million. If we take into account tax credits, if we take into account that the numbers aren't exactly right, me saying $430 million to break even is actually a pretty good number. And let's not forget that when I said $430 million, I said that this is not the exact number, but if it makes around $430 million, it will essentially break even. That is the number. And how did I come up with it? I did it by doing some math, by saying, all right, how much money does it need to make? I took the box office, I took how much it cost to make the film, the assumed marketing, and I even did that with assuming that it wasn't getting any tax breaks whatsoever, which is why some people even speculated it could be less than $430 million. So what we have here is essentially a number that could be as low as 420 ish or could be as high as 480 The rule of thumb that's been passed around, and it's actually incorrect, and this is something that uh, you know the, my friend uh, on this channel that, that was saying I was a liar and saying that I gave misinformation and false information at that, and again, you don't just call me out without backing up your stats. But then he wanted to go say, oh, well, everyone knows that you need to make three times the budget of a film to make your money back. That's not true. Again, every film is different. Every studio is different, which is why when Scott Mendelson does these breakdowns, he tends to use certain multipliers and he tends to use the 2.4 between 2.4 and 2.7 million dollars when he's talking about how much a film actually needs to make to make its money back. And so when we look to those numbers, when we understand that, we need to understand also that tax breaks, tax credits, etc., are so <laughs> are so uh, mysterious that we honestly don't know. It's very hard to really pinpoint how much a studio actually spends on a film, and not just that, but also how much it actually makes from the box office itself. Meaning that all we can make are educated guesses. So at no point did I mislead anyone on the box office. At no point did I mislead anyone on the fact that making around thirty million dollars in Blu-ray sales was probably going to be enough for the film to break even in the end. That's why some people even said it didn't even have to make $30 million. For some people, it said, oh, you need to make a little bit more than that. The fact of the matter is this. I didn't lie. I didn't mislead anybody. I used general information that's available for all. Again, you can go ahead and Google it yourself. Don't just go to Reddit forums. Don't just go to what people on Reddit are saying. Go to the actual different studio forums and go to the actual... Uh, rather than not studio forums, but go to the actual business elites out there, which again, <laughs> I know can sometimes be hard to get through, especially with our boy, people like Scotty Boy Mendelson being one of those elites, and go into their methodology and look at what they say. And you'll understand and realize that the numbers that I'm giving, 430 million, is a rough estimate and that it's pretty damn close to what many people would speculate. But it's also a speculation. It could be less. It could be more. The point is, I justified my explanation, I used sound reason and logic to do so, and at no point did I make crap up, make numbers up, or make a blatant mistake. Now again, I've made mistakes before. I know that there was one video I made where I said that Black Panther had only made so you know a certain amount of money domestically, and someone in the comments said, hey, you said this, and obviously, it was a slip of the tongue, right? Obviously, I honestly, I had said I had the number right in front of me, so I had obviously just misread the number. Again, sometimes I do make honest mistakes. But the insinuation that was made last night was that I purposely misled people. And I might have to actually make a video for Geeks and Gamers too, because I don't like my name being thrown in the mud like that when there is no evidence to back it up. And when this dude has made fun of me in the past, has made fun of my intros, has done all this stuff, and he admitted last night he does it all for clicks. He does it all for clickbait. He says everyone does it. Well, I can speak as someone that does not try to go for the blatant clickbait. Again, you can call me clickbait all you want. However, what clickbait actually is, let's actually define the term, is when you put something in your title 
and then you don't deliver on what you say in your title. It would be like if I had this video saying, Odin gets destroyed and attacked and killed. Well, obviously I didn't get killed because I'm still alive, right? That would be an example of clickbait, right? Instead, my title is probably going to be something like, let's set the record straight on the Elite of Box Office, which is exactly what I've just done. So even though I'm talking about topical things many times, even though I'm talking about things that are in the news, that does not mean clickbait. We need to understand our terms once again. Clickbait means when you mislead people, when you say one thing in your, in your title and your video isn't actually about that. That's what actual traditional clickbait is. So you can go ahead and admit, dude, that you are clickbait. And you've admitted that you are clickbait. I, on the other hand, am not. And for you to insinuate that I'm misleading people or that I'm lying to people without talking to me, without actually having evidence to back it up, you lose any and all credibility, dude. And seriously, yeah, that's right, River. I'm, I'm mad as hell, too. But anyway, uh, before I end the video, I just want to give a huge shout out to, once again, my boy Bruce, who sent me another movie. He sent me Logan's Run, which is a movie that I've never seen before. So very excited about that. But also, MVD Visual sent me another package. It's only been like a week and a half, but I've already got another package with a bunch of Blu-rays. Now it's all Blu-rays and not any DVDs, but there's actually, hey, calm down. But there is actually some really cool things in here. For one, there's an Arrow video release of Clive Barker's Hellraiser. I've never seen Hellraiser before. So the fact that it's an Arrow release for this movie has me very excited. I also got Hellraiser 2. So I've got both Hellraisers here. I've also got a few others that I've never heard of before. I got Lost City of the Jungle, uh, which looks to be an MVD-specific release. It's a remastered 2K from the original 35mm grain. So, again, that's Lost City of the Jungle. I also have Jurga, which was winner of Best Indie Film. Uh, I think it means actual from India film. So, that's a Blu-ray of that, of Jurga. So, again, excited to try out some movies that I otherwise probably wouldn't have seen. And then I got a trilogy, all with slipcovers, of a... F it's called Malip uh, Malevolence... Malevolence 2, Bereavement, and Malevolence 3, Killer. And there are a couple of these movies that actually have people that I know in them. For example, uh, Alexandra uh, Daddario is in one of them. And so if you've ever heard of the Malevol Malevolence trilogy, I got those now. So it looks like a horror film, which should be interesting seeing that I hate horror films. And then the last one I got is Brother, Can You Spare a Dime? Which is a movie that I've at least heard of before. And it looks to be a uh, black and white old school film. So... Uh, let me know if you've ever seen this yourself and what your thoughts are about it. But yeah, I'm excited. I don't know what it is, but I'm excited. Uh, let me know if you heard any of those movies, but also let me know your thoughts about Elite Battle Angel. And if you were a part of this discussion last night where someone besmirched and dare I say, <laughs> I've lost my train of thought, but someone who got the information wrong, I had to set the record straight. I know I gave a lot of math this video, but let me know your thoughts. And if also, if you have any evidence to suggest that anything that I'm saying is not true, Please provide that evidence. Now, if you just have a different way of going about it, if you just have a different way of looking at it, if you have a different criteria, then obviously that is not the same thing as what we're saying about here. And this dude said, I misled people. I've never misled anybody. I've never purposely misled anybody. I've always gone by what I've seen. I've always gone by what I've understood, what I've speculated, but also based on what the industry standards actually are. The reason why I throw percentages out like 60%, 2.4 multiplier, and just everything else that I talk about, 90% of the box office within the first two weeks, is because these are things that I've picked up from different articles, different industry articles, not just from random blogs, but from actual industry articles, picked up, applied them, did some math, and that's pretty much what got me all started on Geeks and Gamers in the first place, was because I was doing those box office numbers. I haven't done any deep crunches lately because many people, deep crunch math goes over their head. I know that I have Valkyrie right now, Tina and Steph. Steph especially is going to say, oh my goodness, why did you bring up all the mathematics in this? Because a lot of people just don't like it. Which is why I try to streamline it a little bit more. But for anyone to call me out that way with no evidence whatsoever is low. And downright an attempt to try and, I think, get some fame. But anyway, let me know your thoughts about that and all the things I talked about in the comment section below. If you like this video, smash the like button, give me a subscribe, it helps me out a lot. You're all amazing, beautiful people. If you want to see me do reviews of the movies that I just mentioned, make sure you check out the eye above my head and click on Welcome to Asgard. I'm doing, uh, every time I watch one of those videos, I'm doing a review of the Blu-ray release. I'm doing a review of the movie, too, all crunched together. And my plan is at some point on the channel to do a gigantic video where I do pretty much all of it together, but spend more time talking about the actual 
actual releases themselves. Uh, but I can say that having watched one video from Arrow Video, that their releases have been really good uh, so far. So I can't wait to dive further into those. But anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. Have a wonderful day. And as always, God bless.